Hi, welcome to our channel, Electromotive Force. EMF. I'm Jack. I'm Costa. And this is Costa's car. Well, we're here to actually upgrade the car. That's what we're really here about. I know, Jack, you love uh, performance vehicles, as do I, and we've both got a passion for electric vehicles. So, let's do it. Here you go. Batteries, car. This car is already electric, and we're doing a bit more to it to make it better. So Costa, tell us about the history of the car. Well Jack, uh, I built the car about five years ago. I picked it up as a petrol driven car. It's a uh, Euros Roadster. Uh, it's a Japanese import into Australia. Um, uh, essentially an MX-5 or a Miata. Five years ago I thought what I'm going to do is uh, pop 45 of these batteries into it. Yep. That'll give me uh, enough to go around 70 odd kilometres. Yep. Um, uh, and it was really a trial, just to see if the car would go. Uh, there's a video of the original build uh, we'll put a link to somewhere. Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll you can check out. it out there. So tell us why we need to upgrade the batteries, mate. Well, when I when I put the forty five in, Jack, uh, it ran all right, um, but I always ran them really hard, and they were starting to fade, and it was time to replace them rather than run them into the ground. I can actually reuse these for uh, for something else, which I've got in mind. Yeah, and we've also got a unicorn here, mate. These, yeah, Tesla, yes. the, these Tesla batteries are hard to come by in Australia. Yeah, they are, they are. So, uh, so I managed to get a, a set of these uh, coming in from Texas originally, but these, are, these came in from Hong Kong. So a bit about the uh, range, you said about 200 Ks. So how does that add up with all the uh, modules? How many modules? Uh, look, there's six. Uh, six modules all running in series. Uh, so that comes out to about 5.3 kilowatt hours per module. Six fives, 30 odd. Uh, kilowatt hours, so 32 odd kilowatt hours in the batteries in total. So three in the front. Yep, so three in the front. One, two, three. And then there's three tucked in the back there. Where the petrol tank used to be, that's right. Similar kind so of scenario, so the, uh, most of the weight, uh, as much of the weight as possible, is in between the axles. So Costa, what was the decision to go to these Unicorn Tesla batteries? Well, it really came down to bang for buck, Jack. Um, I could have paid less and had less capacity, uh, which is probably as much as I needed to have. But when I did the maths, I actually found that the Tesla modules gave the, the most amount of power for the spend that I was prepared to put in. The tech controlling the old batteries uh, needs to change. What's changing? Uh, look, when you upgrade the batteries, uh, generally speaking, the battery management system needs to change, and that's what's happening here. Uh, I'm also changing the charging system because I want to get more power into these batteries. There's a lot more to charge, uh, so I want to get some more power in there faster. So Costa, outside these Unicorn batteries, what else is changing? Well, uh, the drivetrain is actually staying the same, Jack. Uh, so we're sticking with the DC motor. Uh, I know a lot of people go AC these days, uh, and look, AC is good. Uh, but if you want direct performance, DC is still the best on, on the market. Drag cars. And still your for, for drag cars. Yeah, all drag cars run DC. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, and all tank was the best thing that was available for me at that time when I originally built it. Uh, the motor hooks into the gearbox, and uh, then from the gearbox back, it's all MX-5. So we've been at it for a little while. Uh, it's actually about eighty percent of the way there. Uh, we've got a couple of things to do, and it'll be driving. But what we do want to do is show people how we got here. So we've been recording it and we'll, re we'll release that over the coming time. Yep, there'll be more detail about the fabrication, um, what went into it, um, this isn't just why something. Why we did things the way we did things, why we used timber stands instead of metal. Yep, yep, All and uh, some of the electronics, some of the wiring. Yep. Um, stay tuned. Uh, things like, why are we using a DL380 uh, power supply for a DC to DC converter? And how do you do that? We'll show you. What's a DL380? It's a, it's a server. It's a power supply from a server. <laughs> it's a power supply from a server. Doesn't so, everybody know that, mate? <laughs> all, so, all sorts of funky stuff um, going into this, because we're IT guys. Yeah. Uh, I've designed the, uh, the control board. Yep. Uh, normally that's all contained in a little box, but this will be a display car. So it's all laid out so people can see the flow 
and uh, and we'll show we'll show everybody that flow as well. We're going to do something similar with the charging circuitry in the back. Again, it's uh, it's custom designed for this vehicle. Normally in a tight little box, but I'm going to spread it out a little bit again because we're displaying. So we have a uh, an event we're uh, preparing for. Yeah, so yeah. what's that called again? EV EV Electric Motorcana. Yep. So and that's uh, not too far away. So yeah, September 14th. So if you're down in Melbourne, come to the Electricana. It's going to be really good. Uh, this car will be there. It will be running. We might even be offering test drives of it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for further episodes on the build. And we'll see you all at Electricana, September 14th. And we'll be filming an episode from there. See you later. Bye. Cheers. I keep looking at you, and I've got to stop that. I've got to look at this. Okay. So we wanted to make this car go fast. Yep. Do skids. Do bird eggs. Yeah. Same, same, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on where you bought. <laughs> <laughs>